The 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake in the Pacific Ocean triggered tsunamis, but after a massive quake like that, why didn't the tsunamis cause more damage? There are several factors in the severity of tsunamis caused by earthquakes. First, the depth of the quake. An earthquake closer to the surface will cause a more severe wave. A deep earthquake, although it might be very powerful, is not likely to have the same capacity for disrupting the water column uh, as a shallow earthquake. Another factor is the movement of the quake. Is the seafloor actually rupturing up and down, which could then displace this water column and generate a wave or a series of waves? Or is the seafloor, maybe the earthquake is doing a different type of motion um, with, that doesn't have as much capacity to perturb the water column? What matters in the end for how large the tsunami is, is how much water is displaced, how much water is pushed up, typically, for these type of events. That amount of water is related to how much the fault actually slips at the Earth's surface. The impact of a tsunami on land can also differ on some ecological factors around the landmass itself. If you have a barrier reef or if you have a, an extensive shallow platform offshore of the coastline, as we do, and a couple of locations in Hawaii, uh, then the energy of that wave can be dissipated far offshore before it actually reaches where humans uh, have built houses and roads, etc. It doesn't have to be a giant wall of water to have pretty severe life-threatening consequences. The indirect correlation between the size of an earthquake and an ensuing tsunami can make predicting the tsunami impact difficult. That's why the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration takes a better safe than sorry approach. Whenever we're doing these types of estimations of what the hazard's likely to be, we certainly don't want to underestimate what the hazard could be. You don't want to leave people in areas that could be dangerous. Fletcher agreed, but added there's room for improvement. At the same time that the first wave was hitting our shoreline, you had people trapped in cars um, a couple of blocks from the coast. So there's still some elements to this that our leaders and managers of emergency warning systems need to figure out and think hard about. For Straight Arrow News, I'm Lauren Keenan. For more unbiased straight facts, download the Straight Arrow News app or visit SAN.com.